welcome, welcome to Surfing in Maui. Welcome to an all day of Dr. Maui goodness. I have the gorgeous and the wonderful Maddie Leisure with me. How are you, Maddie? I'm great. How are you? Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I'm going to be your annoying host all through the day. I'm Sam Basu, but uh, welcome to Coded Live. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. Thanks for joining us here. Uh, we are going to be all in Maui theme and Maui mode and island time. Oh, there you go. There's the magic shirt. So I wore the lay, but I'm realizing it has some elements of green here, which uh, don't go very well with the green screen. So I might have to switch over to that shirt uh, at some point in the stream. <laughs> all right. So, um, Mandy, let me uh, bring up your... Uh, your desktop here. There you go. So um, Mavi is starting off the day here. So like I said, it's all day Dr. Mavi. If you are, if you have any interest in Dr. Mavi, this is the day where you get to hear from some of the experts, some of the folks who care about Mavi the most. And it's going to be a kind of a busy day. We're going to do quick uh, uh, kind of switches in between. But uh, Maddie is starting off our day here. Maddie and me are on uh, East Coast time. But then I think we're kind of going all over the place with time zones. We have Javier joining us from Spain. And then we have Gerald, who's I think Netherlands. Uh, we have Stefan, who's Bulgaria. And then we switch over to the West Coast for Dan and Sviki. Uh, that's coming up later this afternoon. But our goal here is to kind of talk about all things Dr. Maui, right? So how do you get started? Uh, where are things at? What are some of the tools? What's the story like? And uh, Natty, I got to tell you, like last year, I think you and David, like you did sessions with me and it felt like too early. Like it was a long runway, long flight away. I, I feel like if you are flying to Maui now, like be it from like US mainland or coming in from Asia, like you should be starting to see the Hawaiian Islands right about now. <laughs> like we are, we are getting there. The, the tooling, the story is coming together. So uh, Natty, start off our day here and uh, welcome chat room and everybody who's tuned in. So uh, yeah, Maddie, tell us uh, where did this journey start? Oh my goodness. What a wild year and a half it's been. I, I have like been very sentimental because my last trip, one of my last trips when I was in Seattle was last February, 2020. Little did I know, but that was when uh, Dave Orton now and James Montemagno came up to me and they were like, so we have this idea. It's called like Project Rockwood or something stupid. It was like a street mm -hmm. that James knows. And we want to do this thing and we're going to do it we're just going to make Xamarin part of .NET 6 or .NET 5 at this point, um, part of the BCL and it's going to be great and everything's going to work perfectly and we're not going to have any more like mono versus .NET, one .NET story, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, cool, let's do it. Uh, great. Um, and we went through a bunch of different names. Obviously, Project Rockwood did not stick. Uh, and mm -hmm. then at two weeks before build, we were like, Oh, there's no way we're going to ship this in uh, .NET 5 because the world is shut down um, and it's not opening up anytime soon, is it? So we were like, I guess it's .NET 6, but let's yeah. do it. Let's see what's happening. And I'm so glad we waited because, yeah. first of all, we have, like you said, come so far in the past year and a half. Like, I, at this point, we're in .NET 6 preview 6, um, and Gerald's talk is all about what the, what's about Maui and, and .NET 6 preview 6. Um, and we're like almost, we're almost there. We're almost yeah. we're close. So uh, while you're getting started, um, just to acknowledge folks in the chat room, uh, there's Javier. Javier will be on with us next. And uh, oh, Ed, thanks for giving me the good luck now after you ate <laughs> nine minutes of Maddie's time, which we'll have to adjust and, and, and get back. And um, Maddie, um, Polar2810 is asking where to get that shirt, which I have as well. And so Gerald had, um, uh, what was it called? Um, a bonfire? Bon bonfire, yeah. So everyone can get that Maui shirt. It's not the official one, but everyone's getting it. Uh, so uh, you can get it in uh, mocha, uh, gray, um, black. Yeah. So, yeah. I found it. So if you find, yeah. oh, it's not going to load. Oh, yes, it is. If you find Gerald on uh, bonfire, yes, you can do dark, right. dark mode, which goes to black girls code, and you can do light mode, which goes to girls who code. There you go. So grab them. Awesome. They're great. Very comfy. Yeah. Women's cuts. Thank you very much. My biggest yeah. complaint with conferences is when they don't have women's cut t-shirts because I look like I'm wearing a paper towel roll. <laughs> so uh, cool. Okay. Without All right. further ado. So start us off. Where, uh, so you said February 2020, which is when you first uh, talked about it, uh, you and, and, and David and, and James. Uh, so all the familiar 
uh, you know, faces. And uh, so, by the way, uh, David is also going to be uh, kind of supporting us, but I think his exact words were, I think the internet is tired of me. <laughs> so he's like, I, I've talked about this enough. Uh, so, um, yeah, so that's what, that was February. And then at Build last year, uh, you realized it's just too much engineering, right? I mean, there's just mm -hmm. a lot of changes. But where are we now? Like, um, fast forward one year. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, I think first and foremost is we live in .NET officially, even on GitHub. Very exciting. So this is the place where still, like, we have blogs, we have docs. But if you want to learn about what's the latest and greatest with .NET MAUI, I still recommend 100% of the time going to our GitHub Um it's been kind of fun to watch. We have the discussions feature, so it's been fun to watch like people going through here with their ideas and talking about suggestions. And we have a Discord as well. Um, the link is somewhere. I think it's in this wiki somewhere. But uh, if you want to talk architecture and all that stuff, this is the way to do it. But if you are here and you don't know what .NET MAUI is, I figured I should give you kind of a what is it real quick using yeah. our beautiful new docs. Um, because they're new and they're shiny. And that was one thing we did not really, we knew that, you know, rewriting docs for everything was going to be a lot of work. And uh, now we're staring down the barrel of it and we're like, oh, this is going to be really a lot of work. But we have this one thanks to our wonderful docs, uh, docs master, Dave Britch. So nice, nice. Bought a shirt. Very exciting. <laughs> I love the Minecraft profile picture too. I recently picked it back up. Okay. I'm going to waste a bunch of time talking about Minecraft if I get started. So yeah, .NET MAUI, if you're a Xamarin developer, you can kind of think of it as Xamarin V next. Um, but the biggest changes that you're going to get with it are one, um, it runs on .NET 6. It is part of the .NET base class library. It's SDK. Oh, yes. Links in Twitch chat. I don't know if I have permission to. Let's see. I don't know if it starred me. If not, that's the link of links. Yeah, no, it, it went through. Okay, yeah. good. On, our, on the community stand ups we do, we block links because of spam. But then people yeah. try to post helpful things and it just deletes it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's really this evolution of Xamarin form. Xamarin forms, and we love using the word evolution because it's kind of like a throwback to the Evolve conference if you ever went to those, which I never got to, which is a bummer. Right. Um, but we're really bringing in desktop, we're bringing in .NET 6 and this idea that .NET 6 is um, kind of the one place for you to develop for any .NET platform. Um, we have a bunch of new developer experiences and, and productivity enhancements and performance enhancements and things we're doing with the SDK that are going to make it easier. and. Javier is going to talk about the new handler architecture, which is a really big part of Maui. Um, and we also have the, this whole new single project code base, where instead of having your different head platform projects for, you know, your .NET standard library with your forms code, and then Android, and then iOS, and then whatever else, um, it's just all in one. So you can share even more code than you've been sharing before, whether it's resources and font files and initialization code and your platform specific stuff doesn't have to live in a different project than your non-platform specific stuff. So there's a bunch going on. Um, it's been fun to try and create talks for because it's 10 bajillion things. Um, but what I want to focus on today is like, first of all, where you can start looking at Maui code if you haven't already. I think we're at a point in the previews where like, if you want to file new or .NET new on the command line of Maui app and start playing around with it, you'll have a pretty good time, hopefully, at least on Windows. Mac is still coming along. Um, this all coincides with, and I brought up the blog, .NET so, uh, releases, but Visual Studio 2022 also releases. So there's a lot of new stuff coming. <laughs> there really is. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's just like so much of previous stuff. Like I was writing a blog post, I was talking about the Maui dev experience. I was like, you're going to have a smooth experience and that's a legally binding pinky promise because <laughs> there is there's a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been really fun. I was saying to Sam earlier, like I, for a while I was able to demo, like do some really cool demos with Maui. And at this point, everything's broken. Like I'm on windows 11. I have the internal preview of visual studio 2022. I have like the hottest .NET six bits. And it's just like, at this point, I'm just going to let everything kind of work. And then eventually it'll all start working together and it'll be fun. But, um, VS 2022 is 64-bit, if you haven't heard. Very exciting. Um, and it's really going to be where the uh, bulk of the .NET MAUI support and work is going into. So if you want to start trying it out, I would definitely recommend getting the preview. 
it is free. You don't need like the license or anything until it goes stable. So you're welcome to try it out um, and, and kind of evaluate it. But that's really where the, the good stuff is. If you're, hello, hello, Raventhorn. Hello. Also, Lego Loss, great picture. Uh, I like that your chats have the pictures. We need to do that on ours. That's really good. Um, yeah. So check this out. If you're on Mac, it is a little bit dicier. That's because VS Mac, if you haven't heard their whole thing, instead of going 64 bit, because they've already, they're already 64 bit, um, their whole thing is rewriting the entire UI to be native Coco. So it's super fast and it looks great. It feels so modern and it feels a little bit more like a Mac app and they're redesigning it. So the menus make sense when you look at VS Windows and VS Mac, like they feel like everything's in the same place. Um, but that yeah, had to happen before we could do the Maui stuff. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's a big engineering effort for VS for Mac. This is Jordan Metzen and, uh, you know, John Galloway and those folks. Um, yeah, the, the things are coming along. It's just going to be a while before they get the shell settled in and then they can take on Maui support. Yeah, which actually leads to a question that just came in in the chat too. Will it work with VS Code? So yes, sort of. Um, we have command line support. So command line, you know, go ahead, do whatever you want. And then you can kind of open things up and use your text editor of choice. Um, you can .NET build from the command line. Deploying to emulators and simulators is like a little bit dicier in, in devices, of course. Um, if you download the Comet extension, which is an experiment, and I'm not going to get into some of the .NET MAUI experiments today because there's that's a whole other world of content. Um, the Comet extension for VS Code actually has support for building and debugging on iOS simulators and um, Android. So definitely grab that because that'll kind of help make the development environment easier. But it's just, uh, oh, thank you, David. Hi, David. He's in the chat. Good. Now I can't say anything mean about you. Just kidding. I wouldn't. Um, so, yeah. So, I, I, I want to say um, in Dr. and my preview six, they did something with Android uh, debugging. It's coming along. It's very early days, but uh, I think there's like a workspace thing you add. And so, uh, I'll, I'll try to drop this link here. This is the Maui samples repo. So, if you go look down at the very bottom, uh, so it's it's ongoing, but uh, it's coming along. Cool. Is this workload install stuff? Uh, that stuff needs it to just bootstrap. But if you go all the way down, uh, oh, and then David right. David might be able to speak to this, but uh, ooh, there is a little bit of that. There's a VS Code code workspace. That's cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. Nice. That is beautiful. Um. Excuse me. Yeah, this was actually, that's a great segue because this was the first sample repo I was going to show. If you want the uh, the samples that we're using to like san sanity check that things are working, the Maui samples repo is the place to do it. This is where like, I mean, you can see people on the team are like updating things all the time. Um, there's all these branches. Dave's building a calculator, you know, all this stuff. But um, this is really a great place to look right now for the more simple, but also very up-to-date samples. Um, yes, Javier is like the pro of samples. I don't want to take your uh, limelight because I'm hopefully you show that in your talk. And if not, you definitely should. Um, but this will walk you through how to install some of the Maui stuff. We have the whole new .NET workload thing, which is optional workload. So instead of .NET being one giant monolith of stuff, you can kind of piecemeal like, oh, I just want Android or, oh, I want all the Maui stuff or, oh, I want mobile. I want desktop, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it goes through a little bit of that, but this is kind of the good, like basic Maui repo. If you want to see more of like an intense, good looking app, um, maybe with some backend stuff, some interaction, it pulls on this wind map, go to David Ortno's GitHub for weather 21. This is the app that we started demoing at build and it has been continually updated since, oh, is it clipping? I'm sorry. Thank you for the notice in the chat. My voice is very nasally. So my mic hates me. <laughs> um, yeah, so check out Dave's app here. I have, this is what I have open in uh, VS right now. So if anyone's interested in kind of poking around with it more, I can pull up a version that I have on the emulator. But it's nice. It's got some platform integrations. Look at that. Look at that app, app clip widget stuff, whatever it's called. Not app clip. Widget context menu? Mm, app menu? Oh, context menu. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and of course the single project stuff. Um, yeah. 
So this is a good one to check out for that. Dave has been doing it all with the oh app shortcuts. Thank you. Thank you, Hack, Hack Modford. Cool. Um, Dave has been doing this all single project. So this is a really good place to look at what single project is going to look like. Um, yeah, in a very legit way. I mean, look at all these images he has in here, like a bajillion SVGs, but he just has one copy of them. So, so this is uh, Jake, right? Heading up the single project experience. Yes. So Jake Kirch, who is not in Maui, but in Cabo right now on vacation. <laughs> um, I'm very jealous, but he is kind of the single project guru. Um, and he's definitely the one to, to bother on Twitter if you have any questions about what's going on here. So, so when you started talking about like the vision as to why Maui was done in the first place, like you, you hit upon two things, right? The, the platform support, like um, when we talked about like us being part of .NET now, like that gives me more confidence as a developer, right? I mean, I, I know like Xamarin is .NET, but now it's just baked in. This is .NET for iOS, Android, and .NET Maui. And so uh, like just the fact that I can go to Windows and Mac with tooling that is just baked in, it, it's just nice. It's just more confidence uh, for me in the stack. And uh, for those of us who have been doing like Xamarin Dev for a long time, and and we love David and Maddie and everybody else who works on the engineering teams, but there, there are some pain points, right? And then we are addressing some of those pain points really nicely with Maui, right? The single project experience, how we have sanity in our code bases uh, when we have a big project. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, yeah, even internally, like I started saying this, I think maybe six months ago, I think I said it on a podcast or something, but the amount that we talk with the .NET team, like the .NET PMs that you see, like Rich Lander and um, Kathleen Dollar and these like really cool .NET figureheads, the amount that we talk to them now compared to like this time a year or two years ago is just, I mean, we really do feel like we're part of the team because we are part of the team. Um, you know, we, we, they, they think about Maui and every decision they make now. Um, and we, you know, think about .NET and contributing back to the .NET ecosystem and every decision we make. So it's been really cool. It's been very fun. Um, yeah, good question in the chat. I'm gonna talk about SDK style projects. Actually, another great segue. This is amazing. I don't even know why I tried to have a flow at all because you guys have just been doing this for me. Um, let's talk about upgrading because the number one question, and I'm sure Dave can uh, validate this too. The number one question we've had from customers is, do I have to throw up my Xamarin Forms app? Or, oh my gosh, do I have to rewrite everything? Or is the world ending? Or do I have to fire everybody and hire a whole new team that knows this whole new stack? No, nope, none of those things are true. It is basically Xamarin Forms v next. Um, and for Xamarin native developers, it is just .NET 6, Xamarin Android and Xamarin iOS, but we're getting rid of the Xamarin name um, because the APIs we take in for Android and iOS are just Android and iOS APIs, like those don't change. So. Good news for all of you folks if you're Xamarin developers. It's not like you have to throw everything out and start over. Like for the most part, um, things are just going to work. There are some small changes you're going to have to do though. And Dave mentioned in the chat SDK style projects, which is one. Um, and of course, there are things like namespaces and making sure all your NuGets are ready. So you could do that all by hand. You know, he could. Or we could just make a tool that does like most of it for you. Um, that's where the upgrade assistant comes in. So it is a actual a .NET tool that's been used by a lot of companies right now to get their apps from um, .NET Core or from WPF to .NET 5 and their equivalents or whatever it is. So .NET 5 WPF is the same, but you know, bumping the versions, the new project style, um, all those things. And so it's actually been pretty well sanity checked for those cases. Um, I saw a PM on the Xamarin team, Kathy Sullivan, demo this in February 2021. And I messaged her during her talk. I feel bad about it still. And I was like, Kathy, we need this for Maui. <laughs> when do I get this? Um, so we've just started kind of working on it about a month and a half ago. And Sweeky, who's speaking later this afternoon, has been doing almost all the engineering work for it. So she's not speaking on that. Um, but we're going to have a demo soon. And I'm very excited to share it. Um, yeah, and while you are on the topic, uh, if I'm saying it like AC Nichols, uh, oh, actually, I, I think I know who that is, but okay. um, th this is actually really good. So the upgrade assistant, like especially if you have WinForms and WPF apps, and if you want to move them over to you know .NET Core or .NET Five, it is remarkably good how uh, how how well this tool does, and it tells you exactly what it's doing every step of the way. 
yeah, it's great. And it's a, it's a command line based tool. So it's, you know, type one to continue, you know, very, uh, Oregon trail style, except way more positive outcome, hopefully. Um, but yes, it does have ASP.NET MVC to .NET 5, Windows Forms to .NET 5, and WPF app to .NET 5 right now. Um, so we are going to add Xamarin slash Xamarin Forms to .NET 6 and .NET MAUI support. Um, so like we said, .NET 6 upgrade for Xamarin native developers isn't too crazy. That's really just this triconvert tool, um, which is taking your CS Proj file and getting rid of all the stuff we don't need anymore. And you, if you've ever looked at your CS Proj file for more than two seconds, like besides the fact that you probably have a splitting headache, you'll notice there's a bunch of like project ID GUID, which is just a random string of numbers that means something and uh, a whole bunch of other attributes we have to set. So most of those actually get stripped out with the .NET 6 SDK style projects. Um, and it, it really cleans that up. Um, so that's the big change. And try convert is actually built into Upgrade Assistant. So one of the steps in Upgrade Assistant is to try convert the project. Um, so what you'll be able to do with Xamarin Native, na Native, Xamarin Native um, is run Upgrade Assistant. And the only step it's really gonna do is, um, you know, upgrade the try convert the CS proj and then it'll say cool you're good to go. Xamarin forms is a little bit more complicated, right? Because there's the .net standard project that has all your forms code and then there is the the head projects. There are the head projects Android and iOS and all that stuff. So, it goes project by project. Uh, the Android and iOS projects for the most part are just going to get try converted to .net 6 and we're going to call it a day. Um, what we are going to do with the forms project gets a little bit more fun. So first and foremost, we are going to upgrade the project from .NET standard to .NET 6 by literally like changing the string. And then we're probably going to target the things that your head projects are, although we're not sure how easy that's going to be, but that's the plan. Um, and then we are going to upgrade all your namespace, update all your namespaces. So it's basically like a smart find and replace. It'll take anything that says using Xamarin forms or the XAML namespace for forms and update it to their Maui equivalent. Um, we're going to give you a startup.cs file, which is one of the new single project things that you'll see with ASP.NET on .NET 5 as well. So we'll make sure the startup file is wired up correctly and we'll see if we can intelligently pull some things into that uh, appropriately based on what you're doing in your app. And then we're going to take um, your NuGets, just bump them if they if they can be bumped. And if not, we're just going to spit out a warning and say, hey, sorry, can't can't do this NuGet yet. We can't find the .NET 6 equivalent. Um, what am I forgetting? There's one other step. That's OK. Those are really the important steps, right? It's just like making sure it's .NET 6, going through and sanitizing any of the code that doesn't need to be changed, um, and then you know upgrading anything around it as necessary. So what I did not say there and what we've been having a lot of questions about is like, are you going to single projectify it for me? And that is the verb I've created now, single projectify. So currently, no. Um, that's because we don't even have a build of upgrade assistant. Like we have one build of upgrade assistant that's working that Sweaky has and it's all in PRs. Um, so it's getting there. But we are not really planning on taking your Android specific code and your Android project and, and the same for iOS and pulling that into the .NET MAUI shared project yet. Because um, we don't know how much that's going to screw stuff up. And yes, yeah, single projectification. Nice. Someone should write, write a song about that. Sounds pretty good. Um, we don't know how much that's going to screw it up. We also know that your images right now aren't SVGs. So you might want to take your 15 PNGs of different device sizes and create one SVG and stick it in there. And you might not. Like, whatever you want to do is fine. So the old project architecture is still absolutely going to work with .NET 6. Do not worry. You don't have to smush all your stuff together. So um, yeah, that is a question we've had a lot about it that I just want to address. But we are thinking about like maybe doing it eventually. We just need more people to try it out and let us know if they think that'd be useful. So, okay. Yep, try convert. Okay. I have and chat room has been uh, having a little fun at your expense here, Maddie. <laughs> I think that was a pretty good comparison. I really came up with that on the spot. We've been, <laughs> if anyone hasn't played the Oregon Trail, I'm sure you can find like some emulator version of it somewhere, but it's like a text-based game where you try and get your family from one side of America to the other without all dying. And it is 
surprisingly very fun, but it was a it was a hit in American elementary schools way back. So, <laughs> um, yeah, the board game, the card. Okay, all right. Before I talk about Oregon Trail all day, Minecraft Oregon Trail, I can go on. Okay, let's look at like practically in a in a kind of simple app what um upgrading actually looks like like i i explained the steps of upgrade assistant that it's mostly going to do for you um but just to kind of prove it to you uh, i want to show you some stuff that alex blount on our team has been doing he's been taking sample apps or apps that are open source or that you know he's had for fun so he has art auction tnt go clone and hacker news and let me um repost my url list so that you can pull these up if you want to Boop. um and he's been making a branch to upgrade them to Maui to see what that looks like. So, okay. I just, before this, figured out how to switch Windows workspaces in Windows 11. Okay, got it. Win tab. I know I can hit this button, but I'm trying to use my, uh, my shortcuts. Look at this. Look at this Windows 11 goodness. So round. They're actually not that rounded. Okay. <laughs> Um, and now I can't see the chat, Sam, so please cut me off if um, someone asks something. So I have the main branch on the left here and the migration branch on the right here, the Maui branch on the right here. Um, it's the same. So this, this did not get updated to single project. You can see you still have the head projects. So just to prove to you that those things are not changing um, and that the only changes in these specific projects here are in your CS proj. Boop. Boop. Um, this is the old CS proj. This is the, what do they, they call the project file type? I can't remember. There's a word for it. I should know this. I don't. But look at all of this stuff in here. Oof, you got these references and your package references and your compile includes and your Android resources and blah, 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 blah. This is your new CS proj. So all that's commented out. <laughs> And you have this um, target framework .NET six Android use Maui true. That's it. So pretty exciting. Um, I remember when I started on this team and I like started adding files and stuff, and it was adding them in here. I had no idea what was going on. So hopefully this makes getting started easier as long as well as um, you know your current experience easier too. And then we have the. Uh, .NET Maui project, which is now, let me open this and this. Um, there were always SDK style projects, but this one was the target framework was 2.0. And now your target framework is iOS, Android, and Mac Catalyst. Um, use Maui True, and then that's it. Cool. So you have none of these package references anymore. That's a cool part about the SDK style pro projects is that you have the NuGet config um, and that does everything for you. You don't have to worry about like referencing them all in the project file. It's way cleaner. Um, and then if we look at our XAML CS, Microsoft Maui controls instead of Xamarin forms. So that's pretty basic. Um, everything else here is, is the same. Boop, boop, boop. And then scroll back up. Boop. We look at our XAML and or the main page .xaml. Um, and everything here is the same too, except for line two. Schema's Microsoft.com, .NET 2021 Maui. And I just realized this text is probably really small, but um, hopefully that's better. So yeah, those are the changes. And this is a pretty basic app. Um, I have the screenshot of it. So, so this is as of like, this morning, I think Alex ran the latest bits of Maui um, with that exact project you just saw. And these were the differences. So iOS forms in Maui, you can see um, there's some weird spacing things with this layout. There's some weird thing with the safe area um, and the navigation bar. So those are all things we're going to go try and figure out. Also like these, the sizes of this is weird, these images, but everything else for the most part is ready to roll. Um, Javier will talk about the difference between renderers and handlers and, and the layout situation. And Gerald will talk about what we added in .NET 6, um, preview 6. So that will give you some more details about like what is there and what isn't there yet. But we're 
pretty close uh, to making the XAML look exactly the same. And there's, of course, going to be like compatibility stuff. The one thing I forgot to show was the new startup file, um, which is kind of like the app.xaml.cs equivalent. Um, if you had, well, it's not really. It's more like your app delegate and your main activity equivalent for Android and iOS. Um, but this is just saying use Maui app. Um, if you want to configure any services, you can do that here. And then, of course, we have a shared font. We have Font Awesome here um, for, uh, you know, icons and stuff. But, yeah, so this, it's getting there. There are some things that, you know, we need to tweak, obviously. But um, for the most part, we're in pretty good shape. This is a very simple app. Um, the biggest migration thing that we're not going to be able to handle for you is um, if you have custom control written platform specific or um, in a way that like we're not bringing forward with Maui. Um, and, and Javier will talk more about this, I think, probably, maybe. If not, sorry, Javier. But you can always ask us on Twitter. Um, any like really specific custom renderers that you wrote will have to be um, either used in compatibility mode or upgraded to our like handler architecture. Um, so we're not going to do that for you because that's very complicated and we probably break things. Um, and you don't like to break your stuff. Um, but that's really the big, the big thing. So let me pop back up to my other desktop and then pop back up to my URL is. Yeah, so Javier did say that uh, he'll talk about it. But uh, a couple of things that you mentioned in there are, are really interesting, like the startup uh, CS changing. I think it just brings parity to all of .NET because that's how like, that's how ASP.NET does things. That's how Blazor does things. And if you're doing any type of dependency injection, like that is the perfect place to hook up your services before you come in. And also if you're using things like MVVM frameworks, which is what a lot of like XAML C sharp code bases end up being, it's the perfect place to kind of hook things up before you uh, do your navigation or you yeah, yeah, do your other things. So all yeah. good stuff. Let me uh, let me put you in the spot, Maddie, here with a couple of uh, difficult questions, and uh, you you can you can punt over uh, to, to others. Uh, so let me see. Um, Full Snabble was asking about F Sharp and VB support, and before you answer that, I will only say that engineering is expensive, and you sometimes have to go for the mass first. So, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I uh, absolutely agree with that sentiment. I believe there are F sharp samples in the Maui samples repository. So it's not, oh my gosh, not this is really zoomed in. Um, so it's not like, yeah, F sharp. It's not like we totally forgot about it. Um, VB, like we've never really done any VB stuff with Xamarin. So um, I can't imagine us doing it now, but we're pretty customer driven. Like if we have enough people telling us that VB is really important, um, We'll, we'll consider it, but I definitely would not expect to see it anytime soon. Um, F Sharp, as I'm sure you know, if you're asking about it, has a huge community behind it and has a lot of community support. And the people who develop F Sharp um, tend to contribute back a lot. So we're always open for contributions. We're not building any specific tooling for it just because of what Sam said, you know, kind of the, the cost of it versus the amount of people that we have interested in it right now. Um, but yeah, and I see C films just ask, what about Q sharp support? I can't tell if that's a joke or if it's a real language I've never heard of, but if that's a joke, that's very funny. And if it's a real language I've never heard of, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, then we got we got some catching up to do. And um, this may be just a bigger step away from Mavi that question, but I'm sure like you and, and David and, and Javier, you, you look at other frameworks, you, you see where things are, obviously. Um, so uh, this is squarely for .NET devs, right? But I mean, with Comet, you can bring in some other flavors of, um, you know, how you build up the visual tree. So what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, we have customers uh, ask us this too. Like they'll call us up and they'll be like, hey, we have a .NET app. Should we build a Flutter app or a Xamarin app? And we're like, oh, okay. Um, or, you know, all the different permutations that that sentence could have. So my response um, and I'm going to give you the response that I give, like, honestly, to our customers is that, you know, if you are looking to start a new app and you have a company that's established, um, go with what your people know, right? Like if you have a bunch of JavaScript developers, throwing them into .NET might be a little bit mean. Um, and if you have a bunch of .NET developers telling them they have to write Dart would be a little bit mean too. 
So generally, like, it's okay to stick with what you know. With all, all three of these are great, mature, like, well-community-supported frameworks, right? Like, you can build similar apps with the three of them. It's not like you're going to be missing anything too major um, by choosing one over the other. But um, the thing that I think sets Maui apart from the pack is, A, it's, you know, part of .NET itself. It's not just kind of its own thing. And, and that was really one of the big parts of bringing Xamarin Forms up to Maui was that, you know, we now have the full power of the .NET stack behind us, including the ecosystem. So not just our amazing control vendors and our open source partners like Dan and Prism, um, but anything else that kind of is going to work with .NET 6, they're going to have the ability to let that work with mobile and a desktop via Maui if they want to, if they, if they so choose to create that functionality. So it's just really going to expand the potential of things you can add and, and plugins and all that stuff. Um, of course, I like to think our tooling is great because I'm kind of like my focus is tooling. So I like to say we have the best tooling. I think VS Code is amazing and I will use VS Code until the day I die for anything. Um, but the more I've worked on and worked within Visual Studio, the more I've kind of understood why people really like IDEs. Like for reference, I came from like, I used Vim for the first three years I was in college. So an IDE, I was like, this is gross and it loads too much. Um, but I get it now. And I love it. And I think things like Hot Reload and kind of like the IntelliSense and all that stuff has been really um, beneficial. Also, just things that help getting started, the templates and all that. Like, I think we do a good job trying to help people get up to speed with things. Um, and then the third thing I think is just the native access. And I, I think someone might have said this in the chat. It, it flew by, so I didn't read it too closely. But um, with Maui, most of the things you can do in the native platforms, you can do in C-sharp. So it's not 100%. It used to be 100%, um, but of course, you know, engineering effort. But uh, with us, I think we we make it so that anything you need to do is... Um, I'm sorry about the sound volume. Feel stable. I, I can't believe I didn't have a good setup for this, but it's okay. Next time. Um, anything you need to do, like for the most part, writing your app, you can stick in your shared C sharp. Um, and then if you really have to do something Android and iOS specific, you can stay in Visual Studio, you can stay in .NET, you can go in and do those specific Android and iOS APIs, but you just Google Android, like does how to do this thing on Android. And then that API is gonna be exposed in C sharp for the most part. Um, and then if you if we don't have those APIs in C sharp, we, you know, have been working a lot on bringing our binding story up to kind of like the modern era. So that you can go do those things in Swift and and Java if you need to, um, but I think if you go with Maui, you are gonna be able to stay in your development environment and your um, language of choice for a little bit longer, if not much longer, than the other platforms. Um, and that's anecdotal, right? That's what I hear from customers and stuff. So I I can't prove that, but that's my personal opinion. Um, so that's kind of the three things I like to say to customers. One is like .NET is great if you already do .NET. So, but don't like force people who don't like .NET to do it because that's not going to be good. Um, you know, two is .NET has a huge ecosystem and is amazing. Also great. You can hire a .NET developer and they'll be able to jump into Maui without much of an issue. So that's exciting. And then three is, you know, the native access. So that was a rambly way to finish that. But no, no, well said. And and I think like you said it right. I mean, it comes back to what your expertise is and what else are you doing? How can you share code better? And uh, with, with .NET and Maui, you can share code with everything else that you got desktop wise, but also to the other point, I think uh, Javier was answering some questions. Like there is also Blazor now, but that's welcome, which is being bootstrapped through Maui. So if you want to do web stuff and power it on desktop, you're, you're now more than welcome to with .NET Maui. Yeah. So, um, uh, <laughs> Maddie, it turns out Q Sharp is a thing, so don't make our uh, brains melt here. C films like uh, quantum computing is just too difficult. <laughs> I, I can't even wrap my brains around it yet. But <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> Sometimes mobile development feels like quantum computing, and then I think about people who actually do quantum computing, and that is insane. Way more difficult. Yeah. So, um... so I'm. I know, Maddie, we can have you on all day and have you keep answering questions, but uh, folks, you know where to reach her. Um, that's her Twitter handle right there. So uh, actually, while we have Maddie here, uh, let's let's bring on Javier and we can keep the conversation going. Javier, Yay! everybody. There you are.